shooters, your 60 second movement and firing time begin now. Hi, welcome to Arcadia Marksmanship Club. This is a match is for a benefit match for military and police, past, present, and uh, the match is uh, for uh, Chris Johnson's widow and son. Chris got killed last year, and we've been trying to raise a little money to help his wife out. He used to be an officer up here. He shot at this range a lot. He also shot down at Columbus. He was working for Platte County at the time. He was responding to a call. A truck pulled over to get out of the way like they're supposed to, oncoming traffic, like on, as oncoming and traffic in the same direction. And the truck made a left-hand turn right in front of him. It was over right there. In this job, you never know when you go to work, you're coming home. We do our best to make sure that we come home. Keep it safe, keep it simple. We have about 40 shooters. Uh, some of them couldn't make it, but when you're dealing with police, they can come up the last minute and some of them had to drop out. Uh, we're shooting from 300 yards down to 50 yards. There's eight different uh, eight different events here. Of these events, uh, some of them are very slow fire, very timed, very very uh, shooter friendly. Some of them are uh, rapid movement to contact, where they've got to cover 100 yards, stop, drop, and shoot three rounds on target as quickly as possible. Some have obstacles. Some have barriers. Some of the things you have to shoot around, shoot under. Uh, crawl under that sort of thing. Uh, today, our our thing that he crawled under uh, it's going to be an electric fence, but we've got about two inches of water on the rain, and I don't mind shocking them, but I don't want to shock them when they're laying in the water. The first shots that we do at any sniper match are called cold, cold bore shots. It's one shot at one target. They have one minute to get this done. It's a long time to shoot one shot, but it's one shot, one target. You get 10 times the value of the, of the ring. So the 10 ring, if you hit the 10 ring, you get 100 possible points. That uh, we shot it, shoot at every distance from six, from 50 to, um, to 300 yards. The 10 ring is about the size of a dime, seven tenths of an inch across. The uh, five ring is about uh, four and a half, five inches wide. The second round that we shot today is called uh, the rundowns. The shooters start at the 300 yard line, they got 30 seconds to stop, drop, and shoot three shots on target. The next phase, they've got one minute to run from the 300 yard line to the 200 yard line, stop, drop, and fire three rounds on target. The next phase, they just do the same thing from the 300 to the 200, except this time they don't shoot from the ground, they shoot from improvised positions, which could be uh, boxes, uh, the hood of your car, whatever. We can't do that here, so what we've done is use cross sticks if they want to use them. And they shoot three rounds. They weren't expecting that. They didn't know that. That's part of it. You surprise them as much as you can. The fourth phase is going from the 100 to the 50 yard line, and they do the same thing they did before, except they cannot use the prone position. They can use standing, sitting, or kneeling, but there's no support whatsoever. It's a uh, demanding shot. You get higher shot values for the chest hit, five points each, you get ten shots for the cranial group, which is um, a, a head shot. It's a difficult match. Uh, it's fun, but it, adding that little extra stress, it, it affects people. The next match in this particular event was that you shoot poker. Now, poker with a rifle is a little different. You've got four cards across the top, and they have rows from aces, kings, queens, and tens. The tens are a little bigger, the aces are very, very small. And there's a wild card, which represents a card on edge. It's a symbol, it's a line, a 
vertical line, you get five shots if you you get five shots at the cards and you get one shot for the wild card. If you cut that wild card, you're gonna use that card any way you want to to make your hands better. You don't do flushes because it's easier to shoot a flush than it is to shoot four aces across the board. In that particular match we use English scoring, which means that the bullet has to be completely inside the line to count. If it's outside the line a little bit, you get the lower value, not the higher value. It's a difficult thing. You only get one shot at one card, so if you miss it, you got to do something else. You think it through, make the best hand you can out of six moments. The uh, next event was competitive act. These guys predicted what their bullets are going to do before they get there. They have to tell me how far it's going to drop in minutes of angle, not inches, but minutes of angle. And they're going to shoot this and we'll measure their targets versus what they claim and then we'll come up with their answer. Hopefully they're right, they might not be. The first shot's at, four, at uh, 300 yards and predictably those bullets are going to land somewhere between two and a half and three minutes of angle low. The next shot is 200 yards because they're also using their 200 yard zero for the entire course. Those bullets should be right on. The following group, the following groups at 100 yards, they use the same point of aim again but this time the bullets should land about a minute and a half, perhaps two minutes high. Uh, the uh, next group would be the cold, would be the um, uh, know your limits. Here you're shooting at a target about the size of a baseball, but the 10 ring is less than a half inch across. You're going to shoot this at 50, 100, 200, 300. If they have a miss, there's a 100 point penalty. 100 point penalty missing the target. If they shoot that target, they start the 50 and they make their shot. Then they go back to the 100. If they think they can hit it, they make their shot. They go back to the three, 2 and the 3. If they get to the point where they don't think they can hit it, don't shoot it. Just like in a regular call out, don't take a shot that you don't think you can hit. Demand it. The next phase is called the pump and dump. It's kind of fun. You get to shoot as many shots as you want to from 100 yards into your target, and that target, uh, it sounds like uh, you could shoot a, a bunch. People, the ARs and the automatics think this is going to be good for them, but what they don't know is that every shot has to be loaded singly, one at a time. So the advantage of having an automatic in this particular event isn't, uh, isn't great. The last, the last event is called the last man standing. This is kind of an agility thing. The rifle will be laying on the ground, basically oriented towards the target. There'll be a, a target up there will have 24 dots. Those dots are two and a half inches across. They have a number on them, one through uh, 24. You will stand up behind your rifle, face away from your rifle, and we will give you a number. Six, seven, ten, whatever it happens to be. We'll tell you the number, and at the command of the gun, the police officers use that command a fair amount for command of gun, the shooter turns around, gets on the ground, acquires the target and breaks the shot. The last person to break the shot is out. Anybody who misses the target is out. We work back from the first relay till we have one or two people left. We repeat the process for the next two, the next uh, three relays. At the end of that we take the, the winners from all of those relays and go through it again until we have one man standing. Last man standing of course gets the most points. Coming out on top in the competition was Deputy Joel Prather, Madison County Sheriff's Office with an impressive score of 10-15. Second place the event went to State Trooper Todd Wiley with a score of 874. Nebraska State Trooper Paul Hagen came in third with a score of 861.